in a vacuum chamber a set of charged parallel plates with 0.06 meters width and 0.01 meters plate separation are used to provide a uniform downward electric field of 2000 volts per meter. A beam of protons is sent into this uniform electric field horizontally midway between the two plates. The beam gets deflected and strikes the center of the lower plate. Find A, the speed of the proton beam as it enters the region of uniform electric field, and B, the voltage used to accelerate these protons. Ignore fringing effects at the edges of the plates and the relativistic effects. To find the speed of a proton just before it enters this region, we need to know what kind of motion the proton goes through in this region. Inside this region, a proton would experience a downward electric force because a proton is positively charged and a positive charge would experience a force that is in the same direction as the electric field. For a charge in an electric field, the force on the charge can be found using the equation F equals to Q times E. Because the field is uniform, this E is a constant. This means the force is also a constant, which means the acceleration caused by this force is a constant. Because the electric force is only in the y direction, the constant acceleration caused by this force is only in the y direction. So we can look at the motion of a proton in the x and y direction separately. What kind of motion do you think is in the x direction? What about the y direction? Does this remind you of any kind of motion we have studied? What shape trajectory do you think a proton follows in this electric field? The proton has a x direction initial velocity, and that is what we're looking for in part A. Since there is no x direction acceleration, the proton does constant velocity motion in the x direction. In the y direction, we have constant acceleration motion. Does this remind you of projectile motion? Projectile motion also has constant velocity motion in one direction and a constant acceleration motion in another direction. So the trajectory of this proton beam is a parabola, just like a projectile. Now let's find the initial speed. For constant velocity motion, what is the only equation we need? It's delta x equals to the velocity times time. The delta x, the displacement in the x direction is 0.03. To find the velocity, we'll need the time. And where can we go to find the time? We can go to the y direction to find the time. In the y direction, we have constant acceleration motion. So we can use the four kinematics equations. Do you remember those equations? For constant acceleration motion, we have V equals to VO plus AT. And we have delta X equals to VO times T and then plus one half AT squared. And we have V squared equals to v squ VO squared plus 2a times the displacement. And then we have delta x is the average velocity times time. And for constant acceleration motion, the average velocity is the average of the initial and the final velocities. Now we're using these equations for the y direction, so we can just change the x to y. For constant acceleration motion, we need to know three things so we can find the time. We know that the delta y is the 0.005 meters. We also know that the initial velocity is completely in the x direction, so the initial velocity's y component is zero. What is the third thing we can have? We have information about the force and we have mass. 
so we can find the acceleration. So F equals to QE. It's a proton, so the charge is one elementary charge. If we want the force to be in newtons, the standard unit, we will need the charge to be in coulombs. So it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. That's the charge. And the electric field is 2,000. So if we do this, we'll get the electric force to be 3.2 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. By the way, this force compared to the mg of a proton is, is much, much bigger than the mg of the proton. That's why in this problem, we can ignore the mg of the proton. And F equals to ma. The mass of the proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th, and then times a, and we just set this equal to that, and we can find the a, the acceleration, you'll find it is 1.9 times 10 to the 11th meters per second squared. So now we have the third thing we know for the y direction. The acceleration is 1.9 times 10 to the 11th. Now we know the three things we need. Which equation do you think is the most convenient one to use in this case? Probably this one. So it's uh, delta y equals to initial velocity times time plus uh, 1 half at squared. OK, that's plus here. OK, and the uh, vot is 0 plus uh, 1 half the acceleration 1.9 times 10 to the 11th times t squared. So if we solve for t, we'll find that the time is uh, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 7th second. And we can put that time right here, and then we can find the velocity we need for part a. So the v is uh, 1.3 times 10 to the fifth meters per second, and that's the answer for part a. For part b, we need to find the voltage used to accelerate these protons to give them a speed of 1.3 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. We're using a voltage to accelerate a charge. The kinetic energy gain of the charge comes from the potential energy loss, and the U equals to QV. So the kinetic energy gain, 1 half mv squared, comes from the QV. For the proton, the m is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th. The speed here is 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. And then the charge of the proton is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulomb, and we're looking for this voltage. We need the charge to be in coulombs because everything we plug in here is in standard unit. Okay, when we find the V, we should find it to be 88.2 volts, and that's the answer for part B.